Brian Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're on Battleship Alabama. And Alabama has a feature that uh, New Jersey does not. And that's these big uh, air scoops mounted on the turrets. And as you can imagine, a 16-inch gun turret surrounded by over 17 inches of armor in places gets a little warm inside. Uh, most of the air conditioning, if you can call it that during World War II, was accomplished with chill water radiators. Now, because the turrets rotate, they are not plumbed into the rest of the ship, so you cannot get water in there. Remember what our insulation is on a World War II battleship. It's the teak wood deck. The turret tops do not have teak on them. So, especially in a lot of the late war dark blue camouflage schemes, these turrets are just cooking in the South Pacific sun. How do you ventilate them? Uh, all of the battleships, the, the American fast battleships, have ventilation holes in the armor under the backs of the turret. For New Jersey, that's all they have. So there, there are blowers in there that are electrically powered that are sucking air up into the turrets. Uh, however, because those are angled down, it's also sucking up all of this crud from the deck. I know sweepers are supposed to man the brooms every day, but you know there's, there's still stuff that gets up there and then it just shoots out of these air vents at the guys in there. And we've got black patches on the bulkheads around these uh, vents inside the turrets. So for whatever reason, New Jersey never got these, but a number of American battleships during the war did, including Wisconsin and Missouri. The Wisconsin's built right next to us in Philadelphia. I have no idea why she didn't have them. Uh, and the, I always thought that these were an aftermarket addition. Wisconsin and Missouri must have gotten them because they served in the Gulf War. So in the Persian Gulf, one of the bigger clothes on. No, if you look at pictures, they had these during World War II. In fact, if you look at these on Battleship Alabama, you see that they are riveted to the backs of the turret. And uh, typically, my rule of thumb is if it's riveted, it's probably from when the ship was built. If it's welded, then it's probably something that was added on afterwards. So these seem to be an original feature to me. So uh, here is where the ventilation actually comes out in the turret. We are on the uh, port side of the turret, but since this is turret three, we're on the right-hand side uh, of the turret, just by the entrance to the right gun barrel. And this is what the ventilators look like on Alabama. And this is significantly different than the mushroom-type vents that are inside of the turrets on Battleship New Jersey. And I suspect that difference isn't, uh, well, this is a World War II versus our 80s. I suspect the difference is actually that Alabama was built in Norfolk while New Jersey was built in, uh, in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. And I suspect the different shipyards had different ventilation uh, setups that they were using for whatever reason. Uh, so now we've talked about air conditioning, really forced draft ventilation in these turrets. Uh, let's go look at some heat. Air conditioning might have been important when Alabama was in the South Pacific, but she also served in the North Atlantic with the British home fleet on Arctic convoy runs, so heat is also important. Again, throughout most of the ship, heat is accomplished through steam radiators using steam created by the ship's boilers. Uh, but in the turrets, you cannot have uh, steam and condensate lines coming in because they rotate. So, uh, the solution to that is a simple electric heater, like this one right here. The turrets are already consuming a tremendous amount of power, so what's one more thing? And, while we're here, so there's no plumbing for water coming into the turrets, and yet, there are, um, there is a way to flood the turrets, flood, uh, in the event of an emergency, a fire in here. So, <laughs> We've got two tanks here, this one and another one behind it, which are the sprinkler system inside the turret. And the magazines have their own sprinkler system, which is plumbed into the ship. But the shell decks and the uh, powder hoists coming up through the turret are in the rotating part. So they need some sort of sprinkler system. 
And that's what this is. Uh, these tanks would just be full of water. And there is a manual switch in here. There's no automatic. There's no way to trigger this from damage control central like the magazine flood switches. Uh, and you pull this and the just gravity drops this through the five stories of the turret to the various places where there are sprinkler heads. So could you survive without air conditioning in the South Pacific? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. There is a link in the description below for you to support us, but this link isn't for supporting Battleship New Jersey, it's for supporting the Battleship Alabama Memorial Park since they hosted us today. There's also a link down below to their YouTube channel where they create content similar to ours. Be sure to subscribe to them and watch their videos too. Thanks for watching.